What's up, guys? Um, yes, I am sitting in sunny Southern California, and it is totally bright here. Sadly, I'm headed back to the uh, East Coast in a week. But anyway, for another day. I'm sitting in cold <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> yeah, it's just brutal all around. But I am so happy to see you guys, and Dr. Lehman and I are going to talk about a very important topic. And uh, I'll ask you if you like this video, please like it and share it because these topics that we're sharing are really, really important to help clear up the confusion um, about everything that's going on. Every time I post a comment or story or a caption about meat or protein, I get a ton of pushback. And really, people are incredibly emotional. And I think that there is a, a real disconnect between a narrative and science. And Dr. Lehman and I were talking about why that possibly is. And it's, you know, even healthcare professionals, I get a lot of pushback from healthcare professionals who are quoting low quality epidemiological data. So a recent study came out of WashU, which is where I did my fellowship, an incredible institution. And it was all, I think that wasn't even an epidemiology paper. It was actually a rat paper that said, do you, Don, do you remember the name of that? We could post it at the bottom. Um, yeah, I don't remember off the top, but it was actually, uh, it was rodents. It was in mice and they were looking at impact of protein on macrophage um, responses. And it, and of course had a negative implication of protein intake and immunity or, or something like that. But, you know, I, I sent it to Don and, and the issue is, let's just take animal studies in and of itself. Um, so these models are ad libitum fed rats or rodents. So that means they are chronically feeding all the time. So this is not a human type model. You can't extrapolate the data that you get from rodents to uh, indicate that that is something that would happen with humans. Do you agree with that, Dr. Lehman? Would you say that that is true? Do you want to expand on that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think your, your overall point that you started with is that on one side of the ledger, kind of the anti-protein people are all epidemiology data. It's all derived from that or pretty poor animal studies. And so to your point about the animal studies, people criticize rodent studies, and, but from the basic, from the work we did at the University of Illinois, um, the difference in my mind is that humans meal feed and rodents in captivity eat absolutely continuously. So if you measure food in their stomach, they are absorptive 24 hours a day. So if you're looking for negative effects of insulin or protein or things like mTOR, the rodent model ad libitum fed will give you the absolute worst effect right. because everything is active 24 hours a day. No human eats, well, almost no humans <laughs> get up in the middle of the night and eat. Yeah. Right. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, we go through fasting periods. And so I think most people who work with protein believe that you should have discrete meals three, possibly four times a day. Those individually activate mTOR, activate muscle protein synthesis, and minimize the effect on all other tissues like liver or potentially cancer cells or anything else. And so comparing an ad libitum fed mouse on macrophage response versus what humans actually do, to me is, a, is an absolutely naive science approach only done by people who don't understand nutrition. And I think that we're seeing a lot more of that for um, pushing this narrative, this anti-animal narrative where you know clinicians have a hard, fast belief that somehow in some reason protein is bad for you. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean, it's clear that there are two sides. I mean, there, there is a more vegetarian side who wants to argue for a low protein diet because it's really hard to have a high protein diet as a vegetarian. And so they want that to be true. And so they want to believe the epidemiology, which we all know can't prove anything. It just gives you ways to look at things. The RCTs all show benefits of protein. When you do human trials, they always show a benefit of, of protein. And pretty much all of the people who work in the field of protein believe that. It's right. only the people who work in the field of carbohydrates and, and low protein diet, you know, 
low fat kinds of diets who believe the alternative. You know, that you bring up a really great point. I mean, the protein experts don't believe it at all. Sorry, there was a delay. What was that? I said the protein experts don't believe this cancer nonsense or longevity. Not, none, of, none of the people who work in protein believe that. Right. And I think that that is really important to highlight that the world leading experts in a particular field are very keen on the data that they're using. However, um, you know, all, not all education and not all expertise are equal. And I think that that's what ends up creating a lot of confusion. So you get a great lab out of Wash U, you know, Wash U is highly reputable, um, you know, and I'm somewhat biased because I did my fellowship there. And then they publish it in a peer reviewed journal, but it doesn't mean that to the point that you're saying that people understand that the, the mouse model, an ad libitum fed mouse model, rodent model does not equate to what translates to humans. Um, I mean, and, it would yeah. take a lot of work to feed, right. a, a whole, you know, a thousand mice for right. a lifespan. Right. I mean, that would be a massive amount of work. So it's clear why researchers won't do it, but that just means they're generating awful data and trying to make sense out of it. Uh, yeah. We did a lot of meal feeding. And if yes, you ask, I know. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and Lane Norton and a lot of other people and Tracy Anthony, Josh Anthony, everybody in my lab knows that. And if you do it, what you will do is get more human-like data and you never see the negative, negative effects of, of, of protein in those situations. Right. And I don't, I don't care whether you want to argue plant or animal protein at that point. I mean, you can argue either one. Uh, we know that animal proteins have higher value that you get more bang for your buck they have more essential amino acids but you can get similar effects with plant proteins so i'm willing to go either way on that but the argue that protein is bad for you that just doesn't hold up to the science um totally agree so i think this is a really important conversation you guys and it's also a really important conversation for you to share and also when you are getting inundated with evidence, you know, depend, it doesn't even matter where the source is, right? So, you know, I'll see in good reputable journals, I will see them utilizing these kind of uh, rodent studies to make a claim. We've got a crying baby. So anyway, you guys, if you like this video, please like it and share it. And thanks again for watching. We know how valuable your time is and we really appreciate it.